Hello and welcome to this webinar on the exciting new features in NRF Connect SDK version 2.1.0. I'm your host today. My name is Bjorn Kvole. I'm a product marketing engineer at Nordic Semiconductor. Uh, just a few words on my background. Um, so I started in Nordic in the tech support group where I mainly focused on Bluetooth mesh and cellular IoT cases. Um, after about two and a half years, I moved into product marketing and I've been here for roughly two and a half years now. Just some quick practicalities before we get started. So the duration will be approximately 45 minutes uh, plus a 50 minute Q&A at the end. Questions are encouraged, but please type the questions in the top of the right sidebar. Um, all of the questions are anonymous. Try to keep them relevant to the topic and we'll answer during the end, during the Q&A. The chat on the bottom right hand corner is not anonymous and should not be used for questions. If you do have any more questions after the webinar, feel free to go to DevZone. Uh, that is devzone.nordicsemi.com. And last but not least, a recording of the webinar will be available together with a presentation at webinars.nordicsemi.com dash on dash demand um, after the webinar is complete. Just a quick agenda. So I'll do a quick intro to the NRF Connect SDK before we go through some of the generic updates a bit on security, thread, matter, uh, Wi-Fi updates, and then last but not least, cellular IoT updates. And then we'll move over to the Q&A. Just a few words too on the different communities we have. So we do run quite a lot of webinars. These are mainly technology intros and trainings and you can find the webinars over at nordicsemi.com slash webinars so we of course of course host uh, live webinars but if you can't watch the live webinar we do have recordings of all of the webinars we do so at nordicsemi.com slash webinars you can see the ones that are live that will happen but in addition you have the on-demand webinars too uh, over at Nordic Developer Zone, that's our tech support center and online community. So the last stats I have are 29,000 uh, plus users, 80,000 plus posts in the Q&A section, and 3 million page visits in the last six months. Uh, these statistics might be slightly outdated, so I'm pretty sure the numbers are higher than they really are. And that can be found at devzone.nordicsemi.com. And last but not least, you have Nordic GitHub. There we have a bunch of different repositories, mainly in C, C++, but some also in Python and JavaScript. And you can just click on that link there. That's github.com slash Nordic Semiconductor. And we will provide the um, PDF version of the presentation. So if you want to click on any of the links, you can do that after the webinar is done. Okay, so just a quick intro to the NRF Connect SDK. So the NRF Connect SDK is one code base and tool chain for the NRF 91, NRF 70, NRF 53, NRF 52, and NRF 21 series. Uh, it is optional for the NRF 52 series. Um, so for the NRF 52 series, you can also use the various uh, NRF 5 SDKs if you wish to do so. Um, but we do recommend if you're getting started with new designs, it is a good idea to get started with the NRF Connect SDK. So all of the different protocols that we support are supported in the NRF Connect SDK. So this is just a list of a few of them. LTM, narrowband IoT, GNSS, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, Bluetooth Mesh, Wi-Fi, Thread, Zigbee, Matter, etc. 
Uh, we also do have a Bluetooth version 5.3 qualified host and controller stack since version 2.00 of the NRF Connect SDK. Okay, let's move on to some of the generic updates. So first off, I'll talk a bit more about the NRF Connect for VS Code improvements. That's the preferred IDE to be used together with the NRF Connect SDK. Um, we'll talk a bit about a unified installation experience across all of the three major operating systems. Um, so we support Windows 10, the latest version of Mac OS, and Ubuntu 20.04 long-term support release. Um, and here's a link to more information on the supported operating systems. Uh, there's also some information on whether it's tier one, two, or three, or not supported. So tier one basically means the SDK tools will always work. Tier two means that the tools will always build. And tier three means the tools are supported by design, but not built or tested after each change. Um, so yeah, more information there at the link. A bit of information on the, the tool chain updates and then find my support for the NRF 5340 SOC. I'll talk a bit about memfault support over Bluetooth low energy in addition to TX power envelope with FEM power control. So that's front end module power control. Okay, so NRF Connect for VS Code. So what we have now is a visualization of Trusted Firmware M. I'll talk a bit about what Trusted Firmware M is in a later slide. So now we have visualization of that in NRF Connect for VS Code. Um, yeah, which just helps to visualize how that uh, actually looks. We also have NRF Debug, which is a custom debugger experience for Nordic devices. Uh, it now is also the default debugger in NRF Connect for VS Code, but it's good to note you can use the old uh, Cortex debug if you wish to do so. Um, and yeah, regarding TFM, it shows, it will show MCU boot application TFM on the same core. So that's uh, good to know. And last but not least, we also have memory report. Um, so the partitions in the multi-image uh, devices are shown and we have a graphical user interface visualization of memory usage too. And here you can see an example of the NRF debug in action, visualizing the firmware on the uh, flash, so the flash region. Okay. And here you can also see another example of the uh, memory port. So yeah. You can see how that looks in uh, practice. And we do also have very good documentation for NRF Connect for VS Code. So if you want to read more, you can uh, check out that documentation. OK, so the tool chain manager for Mac um, that utilizes the M1 CPU performance and tool chain. It's distributed by the tool chain manager. And it does reduce build times by up to 50% compared to Intel CPUs. Moving on to Find My support for the NRF 5340 SoC. So the Apple Find My network utilizes the power of crowdsource locationing. Um, accessory devices can communicate with iOS devices to let owners locate the accessories. And this can now support complex applications that use the Apple Find My network as a secondary functionality on the NRF 5340 SoC. Okay, I'll talk a bit about Memfault. 
and what they provide. So you might already have heard about Memfault. We do have a partnership with Memfault for quite a while, but we do have some exciting new features here. So Memfault provides a connected device observability platform for NRF Connect SDK devices. So that can include continuous monitoring, give you device and fleet level metrics, battery health, connectivity in real-time dashboards, and you can customize the charts and alert for Nordic devices. You do also have remote debugging, so you can resolve issues more efficiently uh, using automatic detection, deduplication, and also actionable insights that are sent directly via the cloud to the devices. We also do have over-the-air firmware updates, so once bugs have been fixed, you can deploy updates directly to the customer devices in the field. We do have native integration by the NRF Connect SDK for Memfault, which gives Nordic developers access to Memfault on 100 devices for free. And you can click on that link for the setup, and the setup takes roughly uh, five minutes. So now Memfault is supported over Bluetooth Low Energy. So it does use the Memfault diagnostic uh, service. Um, and this is a custom service that forwards diagnostic data through a Bluetooth Low Energy gateway. Um, and we do have a sample for this. That's the Bluetooth peripheral MDS sample. Um, so MDS stands for Memfault Diagnostic Service, and that sample collects core dumps, reboot reasons, metrics, and trace events from devices and sends it to the Memfault cloud. So more information on the sample and the Memfault Diagnostic Service if you want to click on the links provided. Okay. I'll talk a bit about the TX power envelope with FEM power control now. So this works for both Bluetooth low energy and 802.15.4 based protocols. So that would mainly be Thread and Zigbee. Um, so now the benefit is you can adjust the gain on the NRF21540 RF front end module. Um, to get closer to the target output power over the entire operating range. Um, so in that sense, you can get very much closer to the uh, regulation output power that you're allowed to use in your region. Um, so yeah, yeah you, you might know that the NRF52 based devices do have a variation of uh, plus to minus four uh, dBm on the TX side. So you have to be careful setting the uh, TX output power too high. But with this uh, gain adjustment, you are able to get a lot closer to the target output power while still making sure that you're within the regulatory limits in your region. And this um, can be extended to work with other front end modules too. Okay, security updates. So I mentioned Trusted Firmware M quickly. Um, so Trusted Firmware M is upgraded to version 1.6 and it does bring flash and RAM overhead optimizations. Uh, TFM now replaces the uh, secure partition manager. So Trusted Firmware M, basically what it does, it isolates security critical functions from the user application using Trust Zone technology. So that includes cryptographic libraries, private keys, also peripherals interacting with critical hardware. And here you can see an example of that on the NRF53 or NRF91. You have the on the application core, you have the non-secure part, and, and then you have the secure part, which is uh, set up via TFM. 
And then the way you communicate between the non-secure and the secure is via the PSA APIs. Um, so yeah, in this example here, the non-secure image is the Zephyr real-time operating system. That's where the user's main applications live. And that environment is known as the untrusted world. Um, the secure image there is the TFM. And TFM exposes a set of secure services to the non-secure application through PSA APIs. And applications running in the non-secure world cannot access resources of the secure world. And that is yeah, security by separa separation, isolation essentially, and it's fundamental peer pillar of building secure systems. So PSA APIs, that includes the PSA Crypto API, which is standardized interface to hardware and software crypto backends. It also includes PSA Attestation API in addition to the PSA Secure Storage API. So here we can see security by separation in action. So without TFM, um, the user application would have access to the entire flash memory space and all of the peripherals. So you can see, yeah, the application has access to everything. Whereas with TFM, the user application can access peripherals and memory allocated to the non-secure world. So here you can see an example of that on the NRF 9160. And access to secure peripherals and storage is only possible through PSA functional APIs accessing services in TFM. So you can see the PSA functional APIs over here too. And here you can see example of what, yeah, what the user application can directly communicate with and what they cannot communicate with. So you see if you want to access this part of Flash or this ITC here, it has to go via the PSA functional APIs. You cannot go directly by the US user application there. Okay, let's move on to thread version 1.3 and Matter. So uh, here's just quickly the evolution of Thread. So Thread 1.1 brought low power resilience to it via mesh. Um, it was IP based, also an open protocol, very secure and user friendly and based on the IEEE 802.15.4 radio standard. Um, thread 1.2 essentially Thread 1.1 Plus. Um, it brought some low power enhancements, including enhanced frame pending, enhanced keep alive, coordinated sample listening and link metrics, and also brought some improvements for commercial settings. So backbone router, domain unicast addressing, also multicast across Thread networks. Uh, thread 1.2, the good thing about that uh, thread 1.3 enabled, uh, it enables matter support via bi-directional DNS based service discovery. That's both border router and end devices. So both matter and thread are built around the same IPv6, uh, foundation and thread version 1.3.0 brings the full functionality of IP routing and service discovery to the thread network, which enables Matter to operate seamlessly on the uh, thread networks. Um, so the DNS-based service discovery, that essentially allows services to advertise the fact that they provide service and to provide the information required to access that service. And the thread version 1.3 DNS-based service discovery specifies how to avoid multicast on the thread network, also how to publish thread network devices on the adjacent IP network, 
and also allows threat devices to discover services on the adjacent IP networks. Um, what Thread also brings is standardized border writers which connect threat networks to existing IP infrastructure. So that's essentially bi-directional IPv6 connectivity. Um, so by standardizing the border routers, this border router extension um, makes it simple for thread devices to communicate with devices outside of the thread network. So this is standardized across the thread border routers and includes automatic configuration of IPv6 prefixes and routes across both the thread network and also adjacent IP network. And Threader version 1.3.0 also standardizes service discovery, and that includes allowing Wi-Fi devices to discover services on the Thread network using standard protocols like DNS, SD, MDNS. Um, it also allows Thread networks to appear on an existing Wi-Fi device, just like any other host on that Wi-Fi network. And when a Wi-Fi host wants to connect with a discovered IPv6 address on Thread, it can simply send an IPv6 packet to that IPv6 destination. Moving on to the simplified in-field firmware update. So Thread version 1.3.0 adds a new bulk transfer capability which makes it possible to quickly and automatically update firmware on thread devices without impacting responsiveness of controls or timelines of event delivery. And TCP is very well suited to efficient transfer of data and has specific advantages over UDP-based protocols and includes both an ability to support network address translators and firewalls. Um, one clear advantage is that a TCP connection keeps a hole open in a network address translator or firewall. Um, so this version of Thread also standardizes the use of TCP in Thread networks, including mandatory TCP options that Thread devices must include in their TCP implementations to ensure performant operation. And TCP-based bulk transfer is not used by Matter 1.0, but most likely will be a part of a future Matter revision. Okay, Thread version 1.3 certification. So that is a prerequisite for Matter version 1.0 over Thread device certification. And RF Connect SDK version 2.0.2, which was released end of July, added support for Thread version 1.3.0 to enable both the testing of matter during the specification validation event and the Thread version 1.3.0 certification by inheritance for matter 1.0 end products. Um, and this version of NRF Connect SDK, version 2.1.0, reuses the thread libraries from NRF Connect SDK version 2.0.2. So what we want to point out is that we now do have a feature complete implementation of Matter for Thread and Bluetooth LE. So it is feature complete, experimental support. Um, the matter specification validation event is still in progress. So we don't have final matter version 1.0 code, but you can manually update the matter portion of the SDK later once that has been certified. And a minor release of NRF Connect SDK version 2.1.0 will include support for matter SDK version 1.0 tagged code. Okay, a few words on Wi-Fi and support for the NRF 70 series in the NRF Connect SDK. So we do have NRF 7002 DK board support. 
So that includes both the NRF 5340 SOC and the NRF 7002 Companion IC. Um, in this version of NRF Connect SDK, we do have experimental support. We do have some different Wi-Fi samples available. That includes a Matter light switch example, Matter template, a Matter door lock, and Wi-Fi shell. So these are essentially typical standard Matter samples that work with Wi-Fi, and the shell sample can send commands. Um, we also do have an RF 7002 Wi-Fi driver. Uh, it is WPA supplicant, and we also have Wi-Fi short range uh, coexistence. Um, so we are sampling soon, and the documentation in this case is ready before the release of the NRF 7002 uh, PDK is ready. But for now, best thing to do is sign up to our Wi-Fi newsletter for more information, and also feel free to contact sales to get samples soon. Also consider signing up for the Nordic Tech Tour, which is uh, now ongoing. We'll talk more about Wi-Fi there, but just feel free to go to nordicsemi.com slash events to learn more about the Nordic Tech Tour. Okay, moving over to the Nordic Distance Toolbox in NRF Connect SDK version 2.1.0. So just some quick info on what the Nordic Distance Toolbox is. The goal of NDT is to provide an easy to use interface for distance measurement. And distance is computed based on all of the information available to the device. In this version of the NRF Connect SDK, we've added experimental support for NDT on the NRF 5340 SOC with samples. Okay. Let's now move on to the cellular IoT updates in NRF Connect SDK version 2.1.0. So just a few words on the complete solution that we offer. Um, so we do have the NRF 9160 SIP, which has a dedicated application processor and memory in addition to a multi-mode LTM narrowband IoT modem with integrated R front-end and GNSS support. It is ultra low power, uh, a lot more information on in various webinars, and uh, you can check our documentation. We also have a power profiler kit too, where you can uh, test this out for yourself in addition to an online power profiler which gives more of a theoretical estimate of the power estimates you can achieve. We also have the NRF Connect platform. So that includes both the NRF Connect SDK for development, NRF Connect for desktop, um, which basically provides an application framework for different applications that help developers get started, developer tools essentially. We also do have NRF Cloud, so that's a cloud platform you can easily use together with the NRF 9160. And last but not least, we also have the NRF 9160 Development Kit and the Thingy 91. So the Development Kit is your standard uh, Development Kit, uh, whereas the prototyping platform, the Thingy 91, has the NRF 9160 SIP in addition to a multitude of sensors and buttons and LEDs, etc., in sort of a finished package. Um, they both come with an eSIM from iBasis with 10 megabytes of data for free. Um, iBasis does have uh, connectivity in a lot of different countries, both LTM and narrowband IoT. Uh, we also do have an NRF 52840 board controller with Bluetooth low energy and LT, GNSS, and 2.4 gigahertz antennas on the boards. Okay, so this quickly summarizes the cellular highlights. So 
the lightweight machine to machine Q mode is now and now enables both the Edirex and PSM support. Uh, we do also have NRF Cloud Location Services, which are supported by a lightweight machine-to-machine -machine and co-app protocols. We do also have support for Microsoft Azure Embedded CSDK, in addition to enhance modem trace reliability and robustness. And last but not least, NRF Cloud Full modem photo is now supported, but this does require external flash. Okay, so Zephyr Lightweight Machine to Machine version 1.1. Um, that is an app layer protocol with device management uh, built in. Um, it is based on co op UDP and defined by the Open Mobile Alliance. Um, seeing that is, it is co-op UDP based, it is uh, low power. And LWM to M carrier library is required in some carriers, including AT&T, T-Mobile, or Verizon certified uh, products. We do have an LWM tem carrier sample if you want to uh, test that out. So that's good to know. And more information on that link that is provided there. So in our Nerf Connect SDK version 2.00, there we added composite read, write, and notifications. Also, send operation in addition to CBOR and JSON data format. In this version of the SDK, we added send ML CBOR content format and also composite operations. And lightweight machine to machine version 1.1 is now supported. So, moving over to AV system. So, the AV system partnership. Um, that lets you use the AV system LWM2M server with LWM2M as the protocol uh, together with NRF Cloud Location Services. So we do have fully featured lightweight machine-to-machine -machine device management with support for NRF Cloud Location Services. Um, and these location services, they include both GPS and cell-based uh, location services in addition to Wi-Fi. And this uses our Zephyr LWM TEM stack, but you can also use the AV system on J LWM TEM stack. And here Nordic delivers the location services and AV system delivers the device management. And NRF Cloud Location Services through Coyote LWM TEM server that is used both in the LWM TEM client sample and as a tracker v2 application. We do have a free trial and there's getting started documentation and webinar recording. So see the partner page for more information there. And the webinar recording goes through the getting started too. So here on the right hand side, you can see you have the NRF 9160 with a co-op over UDP running the LWM -tem sample, client sample. And here LWM -tem is used for data device management and NRF Cloud Location Services. So you can see the NRF 9160 connects to the AV system cloud, and then the AV system then communicates to NRF Cloud Location Services in addition to the customer cloud if that is wanted. Okay, so just a quick efficiency comparison. So you can see the source here is from Machination in 2020. I'll just go through this quickly. So this is more meant as a reference for you to look at later. Um, and you can see in general, so on the initial connection, LWM TEM is 72% more efficient compared to MQTT. Steady state, 31% more efficient. efficient. Uh, data reporting, 88% more efficient. A single platform to device, 17% more efficient, and photo update, 4% more efficient. So LWM-TEM is a very good uh, 
protocol to use for low power constrained uh, devices. Okay, moving on to the Microsoft Azure Embedded C SDK. Um, so this basically allows the NRF9160 to leverage Azure services. So that can include device to cloud telemetry, cloud to device messages, uh, direct methods, device twins, device provisioning, and also photo. That is included as a library in NRF Connect SDK and the Azure Embedded C SDK version 1.4.0 beta.1 is supported. But just see the documentation for more information on that. And this is essentially then um, added as a library um, in the NRF Connect SDK. You can see it here, Azure. Okay, the enhanced modem trace reliability. So that does provide modem tracing over UART and RTT. It does provide enhancements for handling modem traces for increased robustness and reliability. And we do have a modem trace backend sample, which demonstrates how to add a custom trace backend. So basically what the custom trace backend enables it enables you to take out traces from the device in another way. So if customers want something other than UART or RTT, they can implement a backend. So for example, store a trace in an SD card. And the trace backend does then use a dedicated thread for this. Okay, so just a bit on the NRF Connect SDK overview when uh, on cellular IoT. So here you can see the NRF91 SOC itself. Um, it is, um, so a lot, a lot comes out of the box. It is pre-certified too um, in a lot of the certifications. So you do have the PMIC, Passives, Crystal. Uh, you have the application processor in addition to a modem and the R front end. So all you really need to add is a battery, one or multiple sensors, a SIM card, and an LT antenna, GNSS if you want to use a GNSS. And here you can see on the, uh, oh, if we look at the layers, so you can see the app core side, that's where the NRF Connect SDK runs. Uh, the modem library then helps communicate to the modem core, and that's also done by IPC shared memory. And here on the modem core, that is where the modem firmware resides. So everything from PHY up to TLS, TTLS, that is run on the modem firmware. And then everything from the modem library up to the application is run on the NRF Connect SDK. And you can see... Um, Quickly want to note, so the layers in uh, black, those are provided as pre-compiled uh, firmware. And the reason for that is it does require certification. So if you as the customer were to make changes, you need to get it certified again. And yeah, that's uh, a bit of, you know, tedious work. So that's why we provide it as a pre-compiled um, firmware. Yeah, the modem library, it, like I said, provides the interface for operating the modem. It does provide eight generic sockets. So that's both UDP, TCP, TLS, DTLS, and AT commands. And it is compatible with the BSD socket standards to simplifies, simplify both writing and porting of existing, existing applications. Um, it also has an interface for GPS, assisted GPS socket, and modem DFU. We do also have the LT link controller here. Also the AT commands library, uh, GPS driver, and DFU target. And yet yeah, that also provides uh, ease of use. 
And yeah, the carry library is required by some MNOs, so mobile network operators, um, and that uses LWM to M. So yeah, when it comes to applications and samples, we do have a lot of different applications. So we have, of course, the asset tracker, which is pre-flashed already. But we also have a serious serial LT modem. So if you just want to use the NRF9160 as a modem and uh, send commands via AT commands, that is possible. Um, we also have AGPS, GPS sockets, and also a supple client library, uh, cloud client sample, a lot of different uh, samples that you can use. LWM temp carrier, which I already mentioned. So that's just good to know. Uh, here you can see the supported modem firmware as of right now. We also have a compatibility matrix and more information around the certification on our web page. And you can see which version of NRF Connect SDK runs on which version of the modem firmware. Um, this should, of course, also say 2.1.0. But essentially, just use version 1.3.2 of the modem firmware on NRF Connect SDK version 2.1.0. Yeah, so a bit on the modem firmware, uh, full release notes can be found in the modem zip folder or also on our webpage. Um, it does focus on carrier and customer fixes, also on power consumption and location. It does have reduced mobility for stationary devices and it's fixed some flow control issues between the modem app and the application. Um, it also has an obstructed satellite visibility detection feature for GNSS. So that's early indoor, also no GNSS signal detection. Uh, here are just some tools. I already mentioned them quickly. So we do have the online power profiler for LT. So this is a nice tool for basically setting some parameters and then getting a power estimate. So a theoretical power estimate of how your device uh how much power your device would consume. Uh, you can then test that with a power profiler kit too. So here you can actually see uh, the waveform. So you can see an example here. And you can actually test that in your sample code in your region. And last but not least, we also have a power optimization guide which takes you through some of the details of how you can optimize for getting lower power consumption. Okay, so that was it for me. Um, feel free to sign up for more webinars at webinars.nordicsemi.com. Get tech support, join our community at devzone.nordicsemi.com and feel free to find out more about our products and service at nordicsemi.com. Also remember that Wi-Fi newsletter. Um, if you want to learn more about Wi-Fi, feel free to sign up for the Nordic Tech Tour. Also get in touch with our sales uh, for more information about Wi-Fi. Great. Let's move on to the Q&A. Okay, um, let me just start off with the first question. Uh, you might hear different voices now. We are more than just Björn here in the webinar because we want to answer all of your questions. Um, first one, uh, is it compatible with Windows 11? I guess this question was relating to VS Code and the answer is pretty simple. Uh, yes, it is. Um, then the next one. Could you explain a bit more about the Mvault support over Bluetooth LE? Um, yes, so we added Mvault support for Bluetooth LE uh, through the Mvault Diagnostic Service, MDS, and the Gateway app. Uh, MDS is GET, uh, or is, is a GET service uh, that can be added to your Bluetooth LE application to connect to a Mvault portal. And then the user can uh, visualize and analyze all the uploaded diagnostic data from the Mambolt console. Um, okay, about NF debug for VS Code, which hardware does it use? 
uh, can the jailing hardware be used? Uh, so the debugger is based on Microsoft de uh, debug adapter, and that includes uh, support for the jailing hardware. So yes. Um, another question to the memfault support. Could you describe a bit more about this Bluetooth LE gateway? Is this hardware available? Uh, could be building from existing hardware toolkit, etc. Um, so the current Bluetooth LE gateway is available in an app, and that's for Android or iOS. Okay, and then I think, uh, Bjorn, do you want to take the next question? Sure, I can take the next one. Um, so what's the M in Trusted Firmware M? So that basically stands that it supports uh, ARM Cortex M series uh, CPUs. It's as simple as that. Okay, I think then, uh, Joachim, maybe the next question. Yes. Is this here available in NF52840? Yeah, so Trusted Firmware M builds on uh, the ARM Trust Zone hardware we have within the uh, NRF 5340 and NRF 9160. So it's not possible today to run Trusted Firmware on, on the NRF 52840. Okay, thank you. Um... Then Bjorn, maybe uh, on what devices is NDT available? Yep, so NDT, and this is uh, also in our documentation. So it supports the NR5340 DK, the NR52 DK, NR52A40 DK, and the NR52A33 DKs. Okay. Uh, then let's see. I think we have a bunch of questions for Joachim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe start with this. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 So I, I see a first the question here is which SDK version supports firmware update for the NREF 9160 and Narrowband IoT? So uh, we basically have a lot of different methods to update uh, both modem firmware and application firmware, and it has been in the SDK for a very long time. This was one of the, I would say, most important features we needed to get uh, supported when we released the 9160. So currently it's uh, possible to update uh, modem firmware and application firmware using uh, protocols like lightweight machine to machine, uh, co-op, uh, HTTP, MQTT, a uh, lot of different options. And we also have samples showing how you can do this with, for instance, our partner AV system uh, using a Lashan open source uh, lightweight machine to machine uh, server. We have examples showing you how to do this with uh, Microsoft Azure and also AWS. And of course, uh, our own NREF uh, cloud uh, service. Yes, and then I can go on to the next one. Does AVS or Azure support lightweight machine to machine yet, or is this limited to AV systems for now? So currently, uh, AWS and Azure does not support uh, light, lightweight machine to machine natively, but both AVS and Azure have marketplaces uh, where third party companies have contributed their solutions for both uh, co-op and, and lightweight machine to machine. Examples being um, companies like uh, Tartabit and IOTerop. So it is possible to, in your own AWS or Azure account, go into the marketplace and click and buy these solutions. So partially possible. And then we have uh, next one. Will, for instance, AWS library, MQTT, and other protocols be supported for the NRF 70? So the Wi Fi uh, series. Uh, so, will it be possible to reuse code for 9160, but direct communication to the NRF uh, 70 instead of the modem in the 9160? So, this is definitely our target. It's a bit early days still for. Um, the NRF uh, 770 uh, series. Um, and 
this will definitely be supported in upcoming releases. Yes, why do okay. some yeah, why do some MNOs require lightweight machine to machine library? So this basically boils down to the fact that the, uh, the operators and MNOs, they are afraid that uh, rogue or misbehaving devices in their network will will uh, will basically uh, overload or crash, crash the network side, do things that uh, is not good for the overall operation of the st sort of stable network. So they need to have a way to make sure that they can apply bug fix bug fixes to the modern firmers out there in the network. So this is mainly the reason why. Okay, oh. then maybe uh, I think we have Johannes here and we can answer the question, uh, is it possible to connect the NF9160 DK with the uh, NF7002 DK and bypass the NF5340 processor on the NF7002 DK. So the uh, NF9160 gets direct access to the 7002. Yes, yeah, so and the answer is uh, that uh, this cannot be done today, at least in a straightforward way. But Nordic is working on, a, on a, an evaluation kit for NRF7002 that would be able to work together with 9160 DK. Okay, thank you. Um, then maybe is TCP for thread 1.3 still not supported for NF Connect uh, SDK 2.1? Uh, and the answer is no, uh, it's not yet supported in thread. Okay, do we oh. have any more questions? I see one question about lightweight machine to machine 1.1. So this is partially already supported in NF Connect SDK. Uh, we have chosen the functionality that is, uh, which cherry picked the functionality that is uh, uh, has highest impact on power consumption. And uh, that is already included in, uh, in NF Connect SDK 2.1. And we will, of course, continue to uh, implement the new functionality as we as we release for future SDK releases. Okay. Um, so um, may maybe I expand a bit on the answer for thread. <laughs> so TCP is not supported yet out of the box in thread. Uh, we plan to have support for TCP in thread in NF Connect SDK two point. To, so the next version. Okay, um, we have a couple of questions that are roadmap related. Uh, we don't usually answer roadmap related questions. Uh, so, but let me check if we have anything that I might have missed or if we had new questions coming in. I think there's also one uh, question here. Can modem core? wake up MCU sleeping core? A simple answer is uh, yes. So I would say that the whole 9160 system builds on this fact that uh, the application core can sleep uh, as much as possible when it's not uh, needed. And uh, same also goes for, for the modem core. It uh, basically can sleep as uh, much as needed. And if the application has any data that it needs to send while it's in, for instance, power saving mode, uh, the application core can wake up the modem core. And if it's the opposite way around, where um, the modem core has some data it needs to send to the application core while the application core is sleeping, it can, can of course wake up the application core. Okay. Um, we have one more question I see here about uh, importing uh, projects, I guess, uh, that were written in the uh, Zega IDE uh, and how to uh, get them into VS Code uh, slash con NF Connect SDK. Um, so this is quite easy to answer. We actually have a video on this on YouTube. So you can uh, just check our YouTube channel and uh, follow the tutorial there. It should explain everything. 
And if you have questions like this or need help with that, I can always recommend uh, opening a support ticket in DevZone. And there you'll definitely get the help. Okay. Um, so has Windows 11 been verified for the SDK? Uh, yes, we have a tier three support for Windows, which is the same uh, for Windows 11 that we have for Windows 10. Uh, you can check the requirements uh, on the page. I can just link it to you in chat, I think. Let me just try to get to our chat. Okay, so there's going to be a link in chat. Uh, if you click here, you will see the support. So same support for Windows 11 that we have for Windows 10. Is Zega Embedded Studio ever going to be supported again in the future beyond version 5.6.8? Uh, yes, Zega Embedded Studio is still the recommended IDE if you use NF5 SDK. Uh, for NF Connect SDK, we recommend using NF Connect for VS Code. So for NF5 SDK, still the recommended IDE. Um, any plans to support old SDK versions with uh, VS Code plugin? Uh, yes, so on this one, we, we actually made a complete YouTube series uh, just for how to handle uh, old SDK versions and how to port your projects over to VS Code. So I recommend using, uh, yeah, watching that one. Um, can you share some more documents on Find My from Apple? Uh, so if you want to develop applications for Find My, uh, you will need an MFI account that's made for iPhone, and then we can share more with you. We are not allowed to share any information on that, so uh, no can do, sorry. Um, then does thread 1.3 support BR, that's probably border router, functions to IPv4 networks? Uh, yes, border routers are responsible for coexistence and coping with IPv4 only site local subnets. So thread 1.3 specification gives a recommendation to implement a form of network address translation NAT. So that's the application use case uh, or the application use case remains intact. Uh, is it possible to share the 2.4 gigahertz antenna between the NF70 series and uh, an NF52 or 53 device? Uh, yes, that is possible. Uh, it is actually a useful configuration in some use cases uh, while switching between Wi-Fi and short range protocol, but it precludes more complex use cases, for example, to receive packets simultaneously on Wi-Fi and short range wireless protocols. You would need to use two antennas in that case. Um, then a question about the LC3 codec. It appears to be open for all and does not require special access. Can you confirm if this is correct? Um, yes and no. So with the LC3, it is open and free to use, but you will need an implementation of that. Uh, for now, we are using an implementation from an external partner, uh, which requires us to sign uh, special agreements. So we would need to get you in contact with sales to get you that implementation. Uh, we are working on a different solution for this one. We don't have it at the moment. Uh, but if if you uh, want to implement it for yourself, uh, nobody's stopping you. But yeah, uh, we, we can help you on that one. And we are working on a different solution. It's not available at the moment. Um, then NF Connect for Desktop supports Bluetooth LE Audio. Uh, yes. Last time I checked, it was part of NF... Uh, well, oh, uh, the, this question is a bit, uh, yeah. NF Connect for Desktop supports Bluetooth LE Audio. Last time I checked, it was part of NF Connect SDK, but not NF Connect for Desktop. I had to program DKs using command line. Oh, uh, you're probably mixing things up a bit. Um, so NF Connect SDK is the uh, software development kit we're using. NF Connect for Desktop is a desktop tool that we use for uh, installing software and other tools, for example, like the Tool Jam Manager or the Power Profiler. Maybe you're referring to VS Code, but 
even there you can use it and also all the commands you can use uh, you can use in the uh, in VS Code. So everything you can do in command line tools, you should be able to do in VS Code. Um, okay. Um, we have some questions that are more of uh, tech support questions. Uh, I for that uh, I, I will not be able to uh, help you flash your applications uh, on this webinar. Uh, for that, please uh, go to DevZone and open a DevZone ticket, uh, and you will get help. That usually happens within 24 hours. Okay. Um, that is all the questions I have an answer for. I have one or two which I don't know that uh, I will try to get an answer for and uh, probably include that in the recording. Um Yes, but with that, uh, if there's no more questions coming in, let me quickly check. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, uh, with that, I want to thank you all for attending our webinar. Uh, you can expect the recording to be uploaded sometime tomorrow. That is our time tomorrow, so within 24 hours. And I will also include a PDF of the slides you have seen here. Okay, we had two more questions I wasn't able to answer yesterday um, that I can answer now. So one of them was, uh, do you have any decent samples for FOTA on NF9160DK using lightweight M2M? And for that, uh, yes, we have. I have a link in the video description. For the other one, it was a question about uh, TFM and uh, multicore setup. I have linked an article uh, from DevZone for that, that specifically for this topic. When it comes to operating that on the uh, modem core in the 9160, that doesn't work uh, because that is not available for users to tinker with. So you can run it on the uh, M33 application processor, but not on the modem core. And with that, I hope you enjoyed our webinar. See you on the next one.